Nikolai Gogol is one of the most important writers in Russian classical literature. He studied in Russian schools along with Pushkin, Tolstoy and Dostoevsky. His main work is Dead Souls. It's an unfinished work, the second volume of which exists only in draft form. It is a funny, witty and engaging novel with vivid and memorable characters, but with a reputation for being mysterious and ambiguous in interpretation. When I studied Dead Souls at school, uh, the teacher said that that Gogol wrote Dead Souls based on Dante's Divine Comedy. But even as a child, I didn't find relevance in the given analogies. Years later, I decided to rethink this work for myself, and I came to the conclusion that Dead Souls is a brilliant Russian odyssey. Hi, I'm Mike Tsulpakov, and I'll help you to discover great literature and to start reading books productively and consciously. Today I'll break down one of the most beautiful work of Russian and Ukrainian literature, Dead Souls by Nikolai Gogol. The book tells about the adventures of Pavel Ivanovich Chichikov, the protagonist of the novel, a former official posing as a landowner. He arrives in a certain provincial town, N, and tries to gain confidence in all the inhabitants of the town in which he was very successful. The hero becomes an extremely welcome guest at balls and dinners. The townspeople are unaware of Chichikov's true goals, and his goal was to buy up dead peasants, who, according to revisionists, were still listed as living with local landowners, and then register them in their own name as living, so that later, by offering them as collateral to the board of trustees, take a large cash loan. The past life of Chichikov and his future intentions about the dead souls are described in the last 11th chapter. Chichikov is trying by any means to get rich, to achieve a high social status. Let's return to the myth that Gogol wrote dead souls based on the structure of Dante's Divine Comedy. Protectors of this theory say that Gogol conceived three volumes of the work, which should have repeated the Dante structure, namely Hell, Purgatory and Paradise. And they say that in the first volume there are bad landowners, in the second both good and bad, and in the third there are good landowners. But is it true according to Gogol? The first volume describes five landowners whom Chichikov visits, and all of them are certainly bad as people, but are they bad enough to put them in hell? Let's suppose that for Gogol such archetypes are a terrible evil that deserve to be in hell. Then the second volume, Purgatory, should be landowners who have fewer vices. The complete second volume, written by Gogol, did not burn down completely, which allows us to analyze the landowners described by the author. The landowner with the surname Pituch, Rooster, is the personification of gluttony. Koshkarev is a natural madman and bureaucrat, is this purgatory? The landlords in the second volume are several times worse than ones presented in the first volume. Of course, we cannot judge so categorically by the drafts, but even uh, what we have tells us that the second volume doesn't draw on purgatory, but rather the opposite, the first volume is purgatory, and the unfinished second is hell. For me, it's completely clear. But such a concept confuses the narrative and don't make any sense. And is Chichikov, a man terrible greedy, a worthy candidate for heaven? I dare to suggest that the theory that Dead Souls is Russian divine comedy is nothing more than a theory. But what then is Gogol's work? Let's drop into ancient antiquity. In the dark ages of ancient Greece, the era which is also called Homeric. What do we know about Homer? A blind old man, unrecognized in his lifetime, according to Plato, who wrote two ancient poems. He is the man who invented ancient Greek mythology. What do we know about Gogol? No, of course he was not blind and he died quite young. But here is a parallel that suggests itself very much. This is mythology. We can say that Gogol is the man who invented the whole Ukrainian mythology and behavior patterns. But is this the only similarity? Consider each poem by Homer. The Iliad is a work about the last year of the siege of Troy, which can be described as a work about what needs to be done in order to live, 
and what kind of people is awaited by death. King Agamemnon beat the stupid and traitors with sticks, but the wise and courageous such as Nestor and Odysseus were helped by the gods themselves. Odyssey is a work that describes the world in which the ancient Greeks lived, according to Homer, of course. In it, the main character, Odysseus, trying to get home, stumbles upon all sorts of obstacles. In my opinion, many nations have their own Odyssey and Iliad. The Spaniards have their Don Quixote, the Jews have their Tanakh, and we have that souls. However, Gogol's work fulfills the role of Odyssey and only Odyssey. Let's draw an analogy. First, characters. Evme, the slave who remained faithful to Odysseus during the long absence, resembles Petrusha and Selifan, who are just as loyal to Chichikov as Evme to Odysseus. Kirka is the daughter of Helios and Perseus. Odysseus came up on her island during sea travel. Several of his companions went to inspect the island, but were turned into pigs by Kirka. Then Odysseus came to the house of the sorceress and, with the help of the wonderful plant given by Hermes, defeated their charms. Kirko recognizes Odysseus as a brave guest, invited him to stay on the island and share her love. Odysseus agreed, but first he took promise from her that she was not plotting anything bad about him and would return the human form to his companions. Having lived for a year in the island in bliss and contentment, Odysseus, at the insistence of his comrades, began to ask Kirka to let them go to their homeland. In Dead Souls, Kirka is Karobochka, but without romantic vibes and aged. Karobochka is very caring as the sorceress. To Karobochka, as well as to Kirka, the hero gets by accident. And yes, pigs were mentioned in that episode for a reason. With Karobochka, all conversations lead to lard, which directly hints at the connection between heroes of Odyssey and Dead Souls. Polyphemus, a vicious, hungry, clumsy cyclop, is none other than Sabakevich. Sirens are demonic creatures that lure mortals with their beautiful singing. They are very similar to Manilov, whose village will not lure everyone, but whoever comes there will not get out of this sticky jelly. Nazdrov, on the other hand, a man who is terribly wasteful and loves fun, looks like a typical representative of the people of Lotofax, who ate lotuses for pleasure. In other words, Lotus was a drug. Nazdrov's behavior is very similar to the fact that he is in a state of intoxication, and the surname is speaking. Nozdri is translated as nostrils. But Plushkin is an absolutely independent character, and that's why he is the only landowner who has his own broadly described story. Gogol is a sly one. He robbed the most poignant scene of the Odyssey into a humorous shell, the scene where Odysseus gets down into the kingdom of Hades to the dead souls is very strong in Homer. In the realm of the dead, the hero meets his friends and the only woman, namely his mother, whose death he did not know. And in order to talk to them, the hero must fill the trough with blood. At the beginning of the seventh chapter, Chichikov tries to guess the biography and talk to his dead souls. He focuses on Peter Neovajai Karita, his surname can be translated as Disrespect Trauch, and the only woman in the list is Yelizaveta Varabey, included by Sabakevich. Chichikov, like Alexeus, travels the world with one exception – he has no home. Odysseus is waited by his wife in Ithaca, but no one is waiting for Chichikov. Chichikov only lives with the dream of a house and worries about what the descendants will think about him. That's the main tragedy of Russian person, according to Gogol. A Russian person doesn't have the concept of home. In the whole novel, there is not a single decent, comfortable house. The hotel in which the main character settled looks shabby and there are cockroaches. Manilov's house is not the most alluring, House of Karobochka has a terrible creaky clock, and there is a complete chaos in the Nozdrev house, 
and so on and so on. Dead Souls is a work that describes the world around the Russian person. A world in which rumors spread with terrible speed. A world in which Gogol's landowners live. A world in which there is no home. On this slightly melancholy note, I want to end this video about the most striking attempt to create a unique Russian and Ukrainian mythology. Gogol's dead souls are surprisingly multi-layered. At the first reading, it is always funny, fascinating and with the spirit of adventurism. But dropping a little deeper, as it always happens with great literature, you dig out more and more layers, plunging in a spiral into the very depths of the living souls of the authors and their heroes. I hope you liked this video and this video were helpful, so make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons, it really helps this channel to grow. And if you have something to say about Dead Souls or other Gogol's works, feel free to write a comment below. For now, bye bye. See you soon.